they put a bear on the box, which improved it so much, they decided to improve the cereal, too. For the people that grew up after World War II, a cartoon creature telling you what to eat somehow made sense. Advertising can occasionally hold a surprising amount of power over the public. What should be impactful based on market research has been known to flop. And what may sound absurd as a concept can end up as pop culture iconography. You'd think that having a convincing baker or chef would be appropriate for selling breakfast food. Yet anthropomorphic tigers won out. Well, I'm Tony the Tiger from Kellogg. A good yarn, but Quake is better. Oh, Quake is best. Get the point. I say it crackles the crispy sound. You gotta have crackle or the clock's not wound. Geese, cackle, feather, sickle, bells, buckle, beef, pickle, but crackle makes the world go round. Snap, crackle, pop, rice, crispy. Utilizing cutesy characters or reoccurring mascot figures in order to move product is an old tactic that's been around since the start of modern advertising. Smiling humans invited consumers to purchase flower tints during the Victorian era. While chubby-cheeked baby dolls successfully pushed Campbell's soup throughout the entire 20th century. The 50s and 60s were especially flooded with animated messaging. And with sugar jets, because they taste delicious and give you vitamins and protein too. They're crunchy as ice cream cones. Ah-ha! Uh -huh. And they're just sweet enough. Grand for breakfast. And fun for snacks. Help you grow up. And feel good. Sugar Jets are real food. The triple treat of sugar toasted oats and wheat. So jet up with Sugar Jets. They make you feel jet propelled. Moving forward, it seemed like the public was trapped in the middle of an arms race between companies competing to win over customers with the most over-the-top spokes characters. Some of which were custom created to sell goods while others were temporary licensed from pre-existing properties. We've searched the world from east to west. Of all the cornflakes, they're the best. Sweet as a mermaid, crisp as a breeze, the best corn flakes on the seven seas. Post toasty! For goodness sake, get post toasty! Hey kids, kids, look here. So ask mother to get that special package of Cheerios. I've got a great new cereal. Can I do that? So hang up your pants for the Earth Glows Ram. We're first alive with Saccharine sincerity eventually faded out in favor of vivid strangeness. Appealing to kids was more important than flattering the sensibilities of their parents. Better have super sugar crisp, sugary vitamin cereal for super power. Oh, sugar bears on the way, gonna save the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that having this creepy world and creatures with edibles being sold to you would gross you out. It didn't turn out to be a case. It actually worked. It was that exact WTF factor that burrowed into the collective conscious, made impressions, triggered brand loyalty, and oftentimes resulted in competition slaying sales numbers. Due to their usefulness and effectiveness, we can be sure that enthusiastic clowns, gophers, and goblins won't completely vanish, but will instead continue to push product at us deep into the foreseeable future.